This podcast is part of the Loosely Connected Network. Visit www.thelooselyconnected.com for more great podcasts, networks, Twitch streams, YouTube channels, and more. Loot Crate, Loot Crate. You know what Loot Crate is? Is it loot in the crate? Yes, that's what Lamb says too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, let me see. So, Loot Crate is a geek subscription box where you guys get a mystery box. I mean, it's not really a mystery box because you order it so you know what's coming. Um, <laughs> and it's like themed every month and it's like a bunch of like nerd gear in there. So, um, so yeah, you guys can go to lootcrate.com, use a promo code, uh, NTFTTPod to get 10% off your next subscription box. And I'm actually trying to find this month's theme. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask you about that. <laughs> yeah. It says there's a Deadpool item in this month's theme. Oh, okay. So it's still the same as uh, when last week when I talked to Lamp. So it's uh, it's called role models. Yeah. Okay. It's it's role role models with a question mark. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was on purpose. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. It's like the so the theme is role models, and then someone like graffitied in a question mark to it. Um. Mm. And there's uh, going to be uh, gear from Arrested Development, um, Archer, uh, The Punisher, and uh, Deadpool 2. Arrested Development seems really out there or I different. Know. <laughs> I know, right? Um, well, it's because they all have the questionable role models. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah so I guess that... Okay. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, on with the show. I love... Come with me if you want to live. No time for time travel. Okay, so uh, welcome to the No Time for Time Travel podcast. We're a podcast for nerds by nerds. My name is Tony, and uh, joining me this week from Sweden is Kwa. Hello. And uh, we actually have, well, we don't really have a special episode, but we are recording on our one year anniversary of this podcast. Yeah, we. Yeah, so thank you everyone who supports us. Thank you to everyone who listens. Um, yeah, awesome. Thank you. It went by really fast, actually. I know, right? I can't believe it was last year. And you know, when we started this podcast, did I tell you how I first recorded with Lamb? Yeah. Oh, I did. No. No, I mean like the situation. <laughs> no, I don't remember. Yeah. So we when we started. I actually used a Google Voice to the recording, uh-huh. and that was terrible because the audio was worse than regular phone. So our first episode was the worst ever. Um, and then that was back when I was still living in motels. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I was uh, living in a motel because I didn't want to get a place uh, when I was in the uh, in the area where I used to work at, and um, that was just funny and weird that I was recording podcasts while. Living and moving around in motels. And then, uh, I'm actually really surprised that it's only been one year since that happened. I thought it was long before that. That's true, huh? Long. Yeah. I know. And then last year, you were still in Vancouver, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And then I think last year, Lam was still in Fresno. Well, no, no, not Fresno. Kansas City. Oh, oh. Wait, we were all in different... Pl- we were all completely in different cities last year when we started this podcast. Oh, that's pretty cool. So, yeah. one year later. Yeah, one year later, we all moved... Uh, well, no, Lamb is in San Jose now, and I'm back in Orange that's County, sweet. and now you're in Sweden. Yeah. All right. So, next year, let's see where we're going to end up next. I know. Next year, I'll, I'll live in a box or something. <laughs> well, <laughs> but is that box in a different city, or is it still in Orange County? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the requirement. You know, it's okay, but you live in a box as long as it's in a different city or county. So, I, uh, well, hey, the nice thing is the box is mobile. Yeah, exactly. You just <laughs> ship yourself somewhere. Yeah, I know. I'll be living in a plane. <laughs> <laughs> as long as that plane is still in, or is not in Orange County. <laughs> in transit? <laughs> okay. But I thought it's not flying away from Orange County or over Orange County at that moment. Yeah, li- living in transit. Wait, yes. isn't that isn't that that movie, The Terminal? Wait, no. no. What's that movie with Tom Hanks where he's stuck in an airplane? Yeah, yeah that's, that's The Terminal. No, oh. uh, yeah, 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 The Terminal. But I guess he's just in one place. Yeah, he's stuck in there. Yeah. 
Um, anyway, so we are a podcast where uh, you guys suggest the topic of the episode for us to discuss. Um, let me pull up the suggestion from last time. It was from John Layola, who's the host of the One Track Punk Show and yes. co-host of the One Track Gamers with Corey and Amanda. Um, let's see. He wrote, uh, in lieu of the upcoming Deadpool 2, who or what other great fourth wall breaking characters moments? Wait, who or what are other <laughs> great fourth wall breaking characters or moments? Yeah, I, uh, I need grammar check for myself. <laughs> Um, yeah, so before we uh, talk about that, uh, how have you been doing? Uh, it's It's been good. The weather over here is feeling really nice. It, it's like California, but then cooler. Oh, and that's feels, good. Yeah, and it's so green. Holy moly, it's so green. <laughs> You're not used to that, huh? No, I mean, it's, it's weird because when I moved here, everything was like really um, monotone from the snow and everything. So my neighborhood had just a whole bunch of dead trees during the winter. Mm -hmm. And when I was moving here, it was like, nah, this neighborhood's okay, I guess. I don't see why people would say they like it Mm -hmm. or why they think it's nice. And then after like about a couple, one or or about two, three weeks ago, it started becoming really sunny and nice. And then uh, now it's it's like really green and lush. And it's like, where, where did this tree come from? Where where does the bush come from? It's so weird. So um, it's kind of like, um, what was that movie? The one that M Night Shyamalan, where it's so green. Oh, I don't, I don't know. I oh, the the happening where like, yeah, you remember that movie, The Happening? No, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what the happening? <laughs> yeah, what happened? Um, no, that was the movie with uh, all the plants that. Um, um, I guess spoiler alert. <laughs> it's uh, the movie with the plants where Mark Wahlberg plays as a scientist and then uh, like a high school science teacher. And um, yeah, that's really weird already. And they find out that everyone's dying because plants are evolving to emit toxic gases as a form of evolution to kill all the humans that are predators to plants. Ah. Uh. Yeah. I haven't watched it, but I heard it was bad. Oh. <laughs> yeah. There was like this one scene that's used in a lot of memes. It's uh-huh. the part where um, like it's uh, someone says like they're trying to kill them to Mark Wahlberg. Mm-hmm. And then Mark Wahlberg answers like, what? No, no, I'm not. No, that's not true. <laughs> it was just like terrible acting. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you, uh, if you know that meme. It's no. <laughs> you should look that video clip up. It's like the most terrible out of context clip of acting ever. Oh really? Okay, yeah, it's really bad. Um, yeah. Wait. So then, um, after it's turned green, are there any different like festivities and stuff that they're doing now? Because I know uh, time- more. There's more people outside. I guess <laughs> <laughs> it, it's more. And definitely, like, there's a lot in my neighborhood that people are having picnics and just sunbathing more. Oh, okay. So, so it's, it's actually really, uh, I mean, yeah, I guess it's, it's somewhat different. Like, because, um, over in Orange County or in California, anyways, like, we're really close to the beach. Uh, so you just see people going to the beach and sunbathe wherever. Mm-hmm. But then, like, over here, uh, there really isn't a beach. Mm-hmm. So people would just start sunbathing in the park, sort of thing, mm-hmm. like public park, and so you just see the people lying there, just uh, either shirtless or in their bikinis, and just lie there and tan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like, oh, that's cool. At first, I was like, oh, okay. I thought I thought like Swedish were a little bit more conservative, but then I guess when it comes to sunlight, all that goes out the window. Well, yeah. I mean, at the same time, if you don't experience a lot of sunlight, you feel depressed, right? So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I understand. It's, it's just really, it is really funny how I see like the contrast and see like, the threshold. Mm. And before, like for us, it's like we have the beach and everything. But my, I, I was explained that there really isn't a beach mm-hmm. or any coastal thing to relax on. So the park is the closest thing you have. Oh okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, speaking of parks, I just started watching Parks and Rec. <laughs> so, I was like, huh. It's, it's, it's a really weird show. It's like The Office, but in a government job. 
Yeah, I I remember just watching part of it. It has Chris Pratt, right? Yeah, yeah, Chris Pratt. Um, uh, Aubrey Plaza. I really like her. She's a really awkward one. Uh, it's, I remember what she played. Yeah, I don't. Anyways, I don't know. Go ahead. Keep going. But yeah. Um, oh, and I wanted to ask you about the uh, the music thing in Europe. Eurovision. Yes. Yeah. Eurovision. Yes. What is your question? Oh no! I mean, like, were there any like highlights of the songs that you liked? Oh yeah, um, I was watching it uh, last week. Yes, Sa- Saturday, Sunday, the twelfth, mm-hmm. Saturday. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, I hold thought on. it was actually really, really cool. <laughs> hold on, can you explain just so the listeners know what that is? Sure. So uh, once a year, it's kind of like. America's Got Talent or American Idol or X Factor, whichever one of those. But once a year, each country or most European countries, they have a, they send representative to, uh, be help to a competi- a singing competition. And the competition is mostly, I think it's like pop songs to be the next, uh, pop song. And it's kind of like the Olympics of singing because the sing, uh, the winner, uh, the country winner will be hosting the next year's uh, event or next year's uh, Eurovision. So um, it's essentially if you enjoy pop songs, I heard it, it could get weird sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so where performances, people were wearing crazy makeup and the song doesn't make any sense or sound really awkward. Mm-hmm. But that's why a lot of people or a lot of Europeans, they will watch the finals more than anything building up to that because it feels like it's just a waste of time. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it's kind of like, I think um, if you, let's say American Idol, you watch, you don't really want to watch all like the rehearsal, or not the rehearsal, all the tryouts. You mm-hmm. just want to see like some of the, the highlights of the tryout in a way or like the top 25 or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the final is essentially the top 25 from different countries. Uh, Germany... Uh, France, UK, Sweden, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and yeah, it, it's I found it really interesting. The songs were really good. Most of them were really good, and I found them. Uh, I think it, it depends on your what kind of music genre you enjoy. Mm-hmm. So if you enjoy pop music, uh, then it definitely is something that you should check out if you're in Europe or you something you could stream or watch through sites. <laughs> so um, I I um I saw the winner. Did you see the winner for that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. What do you think do about you think? that song? Oh, uh, yeah. Did you ask me to? <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll answer it first. Then it's fine. Okay. Um, I think it was interesting. I don't think it's bad at all. Uh, I think it, lyrically it's bad, but uh, as in terms of like uh, how catchy it is and as a pop song, it, I thought it was pretty enjoyable. And during the performance, she she does it like um, was it those loop pedal sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So oh, I think cool. the people because people were doing were thinking like why does she squawk like a chicken or something. Mm-hmm. But but then for me is I think because like you've done it, like stuff for, with loop pedals before Tony, and mm-hmm. I, I'm familiar with those uh, techniques. So I think oh that's pretty cool. Uh, but I know people a uh, few of my coworkers is like what. Why she do that? That's so weird. Why is like chicken? Wi- why is like the winner somebody that squawk like a chi- or that has lyrics that squawk like a chicken? Mm-hmm. And but then like at the same time, people listen to what does the fox say and they enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, what was what does the fox say was a uh, was a example of like you can make anything sound good. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm like. Uh, that's why when like I was watching the finalists, I see the, the votes. I'm like, okay, it's between these two or three countries. And if the finalist is gonna be one of them, uh, I would, I think, uh, is Israel is the better, is more, uh, is better suited to win. Oh, okay. It, it sounded better to me, anyways. So I would have given them my vote hmm. between those like three or four finalists. Okay, I didn't actually check uh, who the finalists were. But I did mm-hmm. listen to a couple of them. I thought that one was weird, but I didn't know that her performance was through loop pedals because that in itself is already like really crazy talent, you know? 
Um, well, it wasn't. Well, let me rephrase. It wasn't like a loop pedal, loop pedal, like uh-huh. Ed Sheeran loop pedal. So it was more just like in the beginning, you hear like animal noises, uh-huh. but then that was just like part of the build up, and then it repeats. So it's using similar techniques in a way, but not really officially. Oh wait, so it wasn't like a live loop pedal; it was just loops. No, I don't think she was that talented to okay <laughs> to do loop pedal pedal. Okay. Um, so the, the one that I heard that I actually really liked was the guy, he was like just himself and, uh, he didn't have like a group or anything with that. And he was really skinny. He kind of looked like a vampire. <laughs> I oh, know. I remember you told me like a uh, Ukraine, right? With was the, Ukraine? um, I forgot. well, the, the one with like, he's wearing black and with a piano and fire. Yes. That one, that one. Yes. That was actually really good. I enjoyed that one. Yeah. I thought that was a really good one. Um, some of the other ones were interesting too, but yeah. I think I'd like the, the ones that showed the live performance. Um, yeah, I don't rem- like, I don't remember anything else that stood out to me. Yeah. There were actually a lot of songs and none of them were, I think it's kind of weird because like they weren't bad at all for, for me anyways. Mm-hmm. And then th- th- so it was kind of like they all hit the same bar. So like you said, not, not a lot of them stood out. Yeah. So it's like, oh, yeah, there's like so many performances. And after a while, was, I think there was like uh, 25, 30, something around there. So after a while, you're like, oh, wait, who sung what song and what song actually do I remember? Yeah, I think it ended up being like, which one was unique and that one stood out and won. Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of them became kind of like, okay, this is like every other pop song. So. I mean, that, that's essentially, that's what they're trying to do anyways, right? They're trying to like, define the the year's pop song. So, so yeah. They, yeah. Yeah. Like, so it, it's, yeah, but the way that they find it is not unique enough against another country's. Yeah. It's kind of like makes it hard for us to see it stand out. Yeah, that, that's true. Yeah. Um, on, on a similar note, not on this year, but apparently, uh, one year in the past, Celine Dion entered. She entered that? Yeah, she she was a part of uh, Eurovision for one year, and I think she, uh, I think she won. I forgot what my coworker said, but it's funny because she's not even European; she's I Canadian. Know. I know. It's like Eurovision. Oh, you mean my vision? <laughs> <laughs> Your vision? No, your vision. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, gosh, I actually found it really funny that Australia is part of Eurovision. What? Why? Yeah. Yeah. No, don't, don't ask me. Okay. Why? I'm just as confused as you are. Okay. I guess there's a U in Australia. So Eurovision. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, if they allow Australia, then of course they're going to allow, allow Celine Dion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, Celine Dion was a long time ago. Australia, as I heard, it was recently. Oh, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. So, what do you think of the event overall? Uh, it's cool. It's um, so I I'm I'm mixed about it. I like hearing all these different things. I like that they're showcasing it. Um, but the thing I don't like about it is that it's making every country except the winner become a loser. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like oh, we we here's showcase your music, but you lost. So. Your country is terrible. Like, you know, it's it's a weird, like, concept. Yeah. I, it's I also know. kind of funny that this event was meant to um, promote unity. And yet you're competing against each other. <laughs> I, I know. I know. <laughs> but, but, yeah, it, it, at the same time, yeah, I, I see where you're going with it. It's kind of weird and awkward, but it's kind of fun from an outsider's perspective. Well, I mean, the same argument can be made about the Olympics. Yeah. So, I guess... Yeah, that, that, that's true. I think it's more like, cause for athletes, they are, uh, it's like the sportsmanship sort of thing, right? And you uh-huh. just make an international network. So for musician, I'm sure it's the same, but uh-huh. it's also like national pride as well. Yeah. So it's like the, it's, it is really just Olympics, but for singing. Mm-hmm. And, um, it's limited to Europe except for Australia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, because America has, a lot already, I feel like. A lot of shows. Yeah. You know, and that thing kind of like 
makes me feel a little weird too because it's like, oh, I can't win this competition. Fine, I'll go make my own competition and win it. You know? <laughs> yeah. But it, it's, I kind of feel like it's kind of, uh, what, what's the word I want to say? Yeah, I don't know. It, it's, it's kind of weird because a lot of pop song, they would start out in Europe and it would trickle over to America. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Like Backstreet Boys. Wait, they started in Europe? Well, they, they started in the US and it didn't go so well. So they went over to Europe and they did really well. And that got big and it went over, it became mainstream to in Canada. And in Canada slowly trickled down to the US. Hmm. So they, so they, so when we first hear like, uh, their, their big songs, like I Want It That Way and stuff like that. That's like after they got big in Europe and everything. Well, that's true. Because like I used to, when I um, listen to music, I used to not like look at the Billboard Top 40. I used to look at the the Europe's version of that and then listen to their Top 100. Mm. And then like a year or two later, it comes up to the US as a number one hit or something. Yeah, yeah. So, well, let me know how... Well, let me know if you start hearing, like, the winner's song in America soon. <laughs> yeah. That becomes a top hit. We'll see. She could be like, like, well, how should I say? She's like a mix of the weirdness of Lady Gaga, I guess, mm-hmm. and the quirkiness of Kelly, uh, sorry, it's not Kelly, uh, Katy Perry. Mm, okay. Yeah. Kind of like that. Huh. But then the style reminds me of Black Eyed Peas. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Hmm. But anyway, I thought it was cool. It is really cool event. I kind of actually want to see it live. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's move on to the news. Yep. Um, uh, good news for some of the U.S. people for now is um, the you know the whole repeal for net neutrality thing. Yep. Mm-hmm. So the. Uh, the the Democrats were able to get a bill approved. I think it was in the Senate to um, okay. keep uh, net neutrality. What was that? Yeah, yeah. Was it keep? Man, I get confused between the repeal net neutrality, keep net neutrality. Yeah, me, me too. I'm trying to remember what was good and what was bad. Which one was the the pro and con? Yeah. So net neutrality is good, and then FCC was trying to repeal it, and the okay. Senate they they had a vote. So it's really cool, like for for uh, us to hear it because like it was mostly a um, something that was supported by the Republican side to to repeal it, mm-hmm. but this and then the the Democrats do not have a majority in the Senate, mm-hmm. but they were able to convince enough of the people on the other side to vote um, against the repeal. Oh, okay. So it passed the Senate, and now it's going to be waiting to go to the house but then going to the house we're still not sure yet because the house is like even harder to uh to get it passed oh man okay well hopefully it does well yeah so we'll just keep monitoring it um but in terms of us it's kind of out of our hands now all we can do is like just you know tell the senators and the house or not senators tell our representatives um how important it is uh but it doesn't matter to you because you're in sweden so (laughs) <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that's true yeah but I, I do hope like it does they do not repeal it because mm-hmm. then I still pay for my mom and dad's internet oh yeah huh. that's true <laughs> and then if they, they start calling me asking about internet stuff I would um <laughs> I call you there <laughs> yeah it's um so. alright so the next uh, news item I have is Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Mm-hmm. Um, it just got renewed for season six, which is really interesting because no one expected it to. Okay. Yeah. Cause everyone was expecting it to be canceled or at least end, um, this season because of infinity war and all that stuff. Oh yeah. 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 To end that whole um, section, but then they renewed it for next summer, but they renewed only half season. So it's oh. 13 episodes next summer, which makes it fall in line right after um, the last Avengers movie, like Avengers 4. Okay. Yeah, so it's kind of like a good timing there too. So, uh, oh, interesting. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. Um, I was going to say something about it. Oh, yeah, because this season, the last episode, this season is called The End. So, 
everyone thought it was actually going to be canceled. Oh, yeah. Okay, I see what yeah. the mis- I got you. Well, no, I mean, I think the writers did that because they were expecting it too. Oh, yeah. Oh. So, so yeah. Did so, it, I don't know. What was that? Did it, did it have like a season finale where it feel like it was going to end like that? End um, the whole series. I didn't watch it yet. I don't. I think it's season finale is sometime this month. And um, but the way that the story is right now is um, super like. So you know how Agents of Shield focuses on the humans, right? In, in the yes. Shield organization. Okay. Right now, the season is taking place in space. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like in the scheme, of, in the grand scheme of things, it's like you know all the all the like Thanos and Infinity War stuff. It's like kind of related. So people were not expecting this show to continue after the season. Oh, I see. So it's going to be hard to explain what, like, you know, how this show is going to go forward for the next season for, you know, up until the next movie. But it's, uh, it's a good thing that they renewed it to go to, um, to be played after the next movie. Mm. So that's kind of weird, but that's cool. Yeah. Uh, unconventional. Let's see. Let's see. Another, another news item I have is the mobile game for Power Rangers. Um, they actually just, uh, partnered up with Saban. Sorry, not Saban, Capcom. Okay. And <laughs> so Saban and Capcom, uh, partnered up. And now for a limited time, this upcoming season, like starting in June and then summer, you can mm-hmm. play as Street Fighter characters in the Power Rangers fighting game. I assume you already have it. What was that? I assume you already have the skin by now. No, I actually don't, um, play this game because it's like a mobile game it doesn't feel like a full game to me oh, okay yeah but now that you said that i think i might try it <laughs> <laughs> i like how, how how that convinced you <laughs> after like you you gave your uh, argument why you don't like it <laughs> yeah uh i might try it it's a good thing to stream too i might i'm not stream but i might post a video on our youtube page of it mm. for the gameplay yeah, uh, it was cool. It was like Ryu versus Jason the Red Ranger. That, that looked it pretty had... cool. Wait, so was that link you sent me a while ago? Was that for uh, the mobile game and not the actual P- uh, PS4 game? Which which link? So the one about uh, I believe it was like the the Power Ranger one, wasn't it? You were saying how how cool it was. Yeah, yeah. So that that's the mobile game. There is no, oh, I didn't know it had no game. Okay. Yeah, there is no um no uh console version of that. Okay. I, I thought it was like the what you call it? Uh the Dragon Ball Z one. Oh, the Dragon Ball Z? No, that's a mod. Sorry. The link uh, okay. I sent you. Okay, okay, sorry, I was confused with that one. Yeah. Okay. No, the, the link I sent you was um someone um bought the Dragon Ball Fighter Z game for um Steam mm-hmm. and then they modified like they did, they made a mod with different character models. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then like the Power Rangers, the Red Wild Forest Ranger, his his uh his power set was basically Yamcha. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because you know how Yamcha does the the poses like like uh like jungle animal stuff. Oh okay, oh yeah yeah yeah. I see. yeah. So yeah, that was cool. Let's see what else do I have? Hey, did you? <laughs> this is not really a news item, but I guess it's a news item. Uh. So, did you listen to the audio clip of that word? Yes. Okay. Okay, so there's an audio clip going around that um, when you play it, there's like half the world is hearing Yanni and half the Mm world is hearing a Lauren. Yeah. Yeah. So, what did you hear? Okay. For the first couple times, a couple days when people were playing it in the office, I keep hearing Yeri. Not even Yanni. It's Uh Yeri. Uh Like Jerry. But we're Jerry. Why? Yeah. And then I think uh, earlier I was having dinner with my coworkers and then they were doing that thing again. And I still couldn't hear it for the longest time. And out of nowhere, I hear Laurel. Oh, I yeah. Like, oh, yeah. It, it's, it's weird. I don't even know what triggered it. But, yeah. yeah so, I, heard, I finally heard Laurel and, or both of them, I guess. Yeah. So for, that was similar to me too. The first time I heard it, I kept hearing that the Yenny thing. Yes. And then uh, after I really forced myself to hear it, um, mm-hmm. I heard Laurel. And, and what I was doing to hear it was um, if you hear the word Yanny, 
then you're hearing it like a minion is speaking the word Yeni. Like it's a higher pitch okay. minion saying Yeni, like Yeni yes. or something like that. But if you hear the word Laurel, it's like a deeper voice saying the word Laurel. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like Josh Groban. <laughs> so yeah. I, what I was doing was I'm expecting myself. I'm forcing myself to expect a minion that I would hear Yanny. And if I force myself to expect a Josh Groban, then I hear Laurel. <laughs> So. <laughs> it's interesting. That's, it's actually really interesting, but then, like I don't know what triggered it because I wasn't even paying t- paying attention when I heard Laurel. Uh huh. Like my friend would just keep playing it over and over, and then I told her like, yeah, I just hear uh, uh, y- uh Yeri, and then suddenly she played it again, and she just hold it up to my ear, and she played it. So I'm like, oh, now I hear Laurel for some reason. Now I wasn't expecting her to play it again, and she just played it again. I was like, oh, I don't know what changed. But apparently, like, uh, one of the other guys, they were saying how it depends on the frequency that you play at of the speaker and the phone and whatnot, like con- certain conditions of things mm-hmm. as well. So, that, I, I don't know if that's true or not. I mean, but, yes, I was going to tell you that the frequency part, that is true. Because mm-hmm. when you're expecting to hear it as a Josh Groban voice, you're expecting to hear a deeper, like a lower frequency. Mm. Right? And then same thing with the other way where you're expecting to hear a menu voice. You're expecting to hear a higher frequency. So the speakers play into effect too, but even, even though they play into effect, the same two people can listen to the same speaker. Sorry, this, the two people can listen to the same speaker and they could still hear it differently based on yeah. like what, um, maybe like the other thing was the shape of their ear, how it processes sound. Like it can slightly, uh, increase certain frequencies. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, so there's that too. So there are like so many different factors. I also heard like, um, we got, uh, they, I don't remember what was the, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> oh yeah. I also heard like, um, it was kind of like a, an age sort of thing. Like how, when we grow older, our, uh, hearing deteriorates. Yeah. I heard about that too. <laughs> So I don't know what happened because then we're supposed to hear lower frequency when we're older, right? Mm-hmm. But then I keep hearing young uh, the the Yeni, which is higher frequency. But then I was like, what 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 just happened? When I heard Laurel, did I just grow old that one split <laughs> second? <laughs> it's like, and I'm old. Thanks. This, this is like how you determine you're old. Listen to this. What do you hear? <laughs> um, yeah. But the other thing too is that um, females can will hear differently than males because of um, what's it called? You know how like females they have a, a a more likelihood of hearing higher frequencies. Have you heard of that? Uh, no, it's it's like a mother's instinct thing where oh, okay. yeah they they list they they're more sensitive to that because that's the same pitch as a crying baby. So 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 people are I mean females are more. Inclined to hear Yeni? Well, th- that's a theory because they're more likely to hear the higher frequencies. Okay. Uh, but in practice, that's not true too because yeah. there are a bunch of people who say they hear Laurel. Yeah. Yeah. So there's like, yeah, this is the whole like, what was it called? That, that dress? Oh, yeah, yeah, the, is it a uh, black and blue or white and gold sort of thing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then there was also this other thing recently too. I don't know if you saw, but. It was like a Nike shoe. It was either um, pink and white, or it was uh, teal and gray. Have teal you seen that one? Gray. No. Hold on. Let me um, actually go on their Instagram. I posted it up. <laughs> oh, oh, our Instagram. Okay. Yeah, Instagram dot com slash ntftt pod. And uh, that's a plug for for our listeners to the list to our Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say very very nice segue. Yes. Yeah, if you go on it, it's like the seventh picture down. Oh, I think I'm... Okay. Yeah, you see it? The what color do you see? Yeah. Yeah. What 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 color is that shoe? <laughs> I see pink and white. You see pink and white? Yeah. See, I see teal and gray. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, which one... See, I don't even know this. Which one do you see is pink? The laces or the actual shoe? The actual shoe. So the shoe is pink and the laces are white? Correct. Yeah, my my mind, I don't know what the heck is going on with me. 
and maybe half the other people, but I see the shoe is gray and the, the laces are teal. Huh. Okay. Yeah. So this was happening like a few weeks ago. And then this whole, whole, uh, Yanni Laurel thing came up and I'm like, what is going on? So did, did you test with other people to see what they say? For what? To the shoe? Yeah. Yeah. I got a mixed response too. Oh. Yeah. No, my, my girlfriend also sees, uh, teal and gray. Oh. Yeah. And then some of my friends see teal and gray. Some of them see pink and white. Oh, interesting. And one of my other friends is like, it's teal and gray. And I, was it, what did he say? He said, it's teal and gray. And if you see pink and white, sorry, I can't help that you're colorblind. <laughs> yeah. Is that what, works? what? Is that what happened? No, no, it's not. So if you actually, um, take this image and you do slight adjustments to the saturation, uh-huh. then, um, you'll see that this is like, in the middle between two different, um, two different, um, what's it called? Um, color schemes, I guess, because the yeah. color balance is off. Oh. So, depending on how you see it, some people will f- auto fix that color balance better yeah. than others, and then some will fix it to the wrong color balance. <coughs> uh. But, uh, yeah, the real, this, this color, the real one is actually pink and white. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, the real shoe is pink and white. Oh, uh, okay. Is is that kind of like that, that dra- dress situation? People were debating about it, but then the, the real dress is like, what was it? Blue and black? Black and blue? Yeah, yeah, the real one's, I think, black and blue. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I uh, I remember um, people were debating the same way too. And then, yeah. let me see, Are, how do I, let me send you an image. Because I wanted to show you this other one that someone else sent me for Yanni and and uh, Laurel, mm-hmm. which I'm going to post this up on Instagram later. But there you go. I just sent it. What do you see? <laughs> Wait, loading. Still loading. Oh, okay. I see both now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, for the people who are just hearing us talk about this. It's cursive writing for the word Loro, but it's also cursive writing for the word Yanni. Yeah. And I'll post it up on your Instagram. Um, but yeah. Anyway, you have any other news items? <laughs> That's pretty cool. Tony? Still there? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay good. Good. <laughs> you went quiet. How's it going, Tony? <laughs> no, I, I said, do you have any other news items? Oh, oh, oh sorry. <laughs> no, no. Let me check, actually. But I don't think I do. Okay. Uh, actually, I think I do. Um, let me send you the thing. I just saw it just now. Hold on. Sorry. <coughs> to check with this. Uh, yeah. So there is a uh, upcoming new Thundercats cartoon that's in oh, like yeah. that's gonna be aired on uh, Cartoon Network. Um, but it's gonna it's a different style from the very old school one that we know back in the late 80s early 90s mm-hmm. yeah it's a lot more cartoony uh i'm trying to think of of the, the, the show that is similar um they look like chibi characters right yeah it's, it's pretty much chibi version of it yeah i think it it's reminds all that me too. Of, uh would you say it's, it's similar to like teen Ti- teen titans and teen titans go yeah i think it does it does okay like that. or like the the remake for um DuckTales, I guess. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, it, it looks a lot... It looks pretty interesting. The style is pretty unique, and I enjoy that. So, we'll see how, how fun it is. But it's weird because, like, the originals were, like, humanoid. Like... Yeah. Yeah, like, it's as if you made, like, Mortal Kombat become, like... Like, I chibi. don't know. Yeah, like, chibi Mortal Kombat. Like, big head mode. Yeah. But but I, I enjoy the, the kitty look. It feels cartoonish. I like cartoons. I hope the writing's good. Yeah. So we'll see how fun it is. It looks fun. Yeah. Right. The animation nowadays, I feel like animation quality has gone up in the past years. It better. Yeah. Yeah. Better. Up. Going up. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I think nowadays it's more like, is it even a good story? Because uh, it's, it's still one of those shows where it's a kid show, but I would like it if it's even funnier if you're an adult. 
Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. I think I was watching Teen Titans Go, like the first yeah. episode, um, mm-hmm. just watching it again a while back. And I was laughing so hard because there were like things in there that we would understand the kids would not. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like a Disney movie sort of thing, right? Where uh, it has a lot, a lot of, it's entertaining for kids, but it has a lot of adult humor that kids might overlook. Yeah. Like Animaniacs, actually. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anime is definitely a big one. Yeah. yeah. Which, by the way, it's, uh, I think almost all of it's available now on Hulu. Ooh. Oh, Hulu. Never mind. Yeah. I don't know if it's on Netflix, but Hulu for sure there is. Oh. I don't know. I feel like I'm starting to like Hulu a little bit more because, um, it's owned by major networks. So you get more of the network shows on there. Hmm. Interesting. That's cool. We'll see how it goes. Topic of the episode. Yep. Cool. All right. Let's move on to the topic of the episode. Which yes. is from John Layola and um, basically, you know, what are other memorable breaking the fourth wall moments <coughs> in anything, actually? Mm, I'm trying to remember. Do you remember a lot of the uh, Deadpool stuff or any other things? Um, yeah, there's a lot of like meta stuff, like a lot of meta stuff. Um, you remember that scene in Jay and Silent? Did you ever watch Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back? I watched part of it. I never watched the full movie. Yeah, there was a part in there where there's a character played by Ben Affleck. And mm-hmm. um, he basically talks about how Ben Affleck sucks or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was just like making fun of himself. I don't remember the exact like, words, but it was pretty funny. Mm. And then, like, I think... <coughs> I'm trying to remember... I don't remember any specific moments... Actually, I, I I do remember like uh, Animaniacs did do a few, didn't they? Oh yeah, yeah they did. I, do I a lot. Did a lot. <laughs> yeah, they always like turn to the camera and talk. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Same with actually a lot of the shows in the nineties they did that. Like I think Freakazoid did that a few times. Oh, um, that's true. Yeah. Or like, yeah, a lot of the times like when those shows when like don't try this at home, kids. Mm-hmm. And they speak to the camera. That that's literally like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Break the fourth wall. Um, actually, did you watch Mr. Robot? No, I haven't. Is that good? Oh, it's so good. Um, there's some breaking the fourth wall in there too because of the narrator. Um, mm. and there are some crazy twists in there where the breaking the fourth wall is like in itself, it's like a twist because it's like a unreliable narrator. Hmm. So you're seeing the story through the eyes of the narrator, but then later on you find out like, you know, it's like, it, there's a twist to it. I can't really tell you what it is, but you should watch yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. Is, um, is it on Netflix? I think it's on, I think I saw it on Amazon Prime. Okay. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of breaking the fourth wall there. Man, it's a good show too, just in general. It's like, I just got to tell you, like, it's like, what do you, okay. What do you think a real life hacker looks like like in terms of hacking oh uh i i assume like some sort of a like nerdy person mm-hmm. yeah computer it nerdy person something like that sitting in front of the computer and just coding and stuff like that yeah so yeah in this show it's about hacking and it is a person in front of the computer coding but the way that they film it makes it look so epic like mm-hmm. i don't even know like how but it just makes it super epic hacking even though it's still a person in front of the computer coding um yeah and the other thing that's cool is if you look at the coding that they're actually doing they're using mm-hmm. real it commands it's not like mm-hmm. you know it's not like that fake hacking thing that in the 90s you would see oh that's cool yeah so like real like linux stuff and like all the all the root commands and stuff like that so, so, so they're actually hacking and yeah. recording it so it's actually live but people would think it's fake <laughs> yeah. it's like oh it's such a good movie, a show it's like no no they're actually hacking they're trying to hack into the, the FBI right now and we're praising them <laughs> and we're all accomplices by watching <laughs> it's actually like a reality TV show <laughs> um let me see did you ever watch uh, Spaceballs no uh, I haven't is that good there is a lot of stuff in there that is uh, meta. And one thing I remember that's mm. really funny is like 
um, uh, <laughs> it's so stupid. So you should watch it. It's an old movie. It's really fun. Uh, it's really funny. I heard that. There's, yeah. this, <laughs> there's a part where they're like trying to figure out like what their next move will be. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, oh no, what do we do next? We're like, oh no, what are we going to do? And then the other guy was like, oh, I know. We can like, uh, watch this video and then we'll know what to do. So they take a video. So this movie's called Spaceballs, right? They take yeah. a video from the rental store of Spaceballs and then they play it into a TV and they're like, okay, fast forward it. <laughs> to- <laughs> so that they can find out what their next move is. <laughs> That's, that's pretty good. I like that. <laughs> it's so stupid, but it's so funny. Oh, man. Uh, let's see. What else was there? Oh, yeah. Did you ever watch um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off? So, why does it sound so familiar? Ferris it, Bueller, it's-, it's the one where um, the guy pretends he's sick, so he mm-hmm. takes the day off from school, from high school. Oh. No. I don't, I don't think I watched it, but it sounds familiar. Yeah, that whole movie is like is back in like the eighties, late eighties, mm-hmm. and um, and he uh, basically talks to the camera all the time and kind of just addresses the audience like mm-hmm. the whole time. Like, so did you watch Deadpool, the first one? Yeah, uh-huh. you remember the post credit scene? Post credit scenes? No, what happened? Post credit? Forgot the post credit was um, he uh, he was in the hallway and he came out wearing a bathrobe. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, you guys are still here? Go home. Oh. Go home. You remember that part? Okay. Now I remember. Yeah. yeah. That was a ripoff directly from um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh. At the end of Ferris Bueller's Day Off, they had that exact scene where Ferris That's- Bueller comes out and this, talks to the audience like, you guys are still here? You know, it's exactly the same thing. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, what else was there that you remember? Um... I I mostly just remember a lot of like the the typical cliche stuff from the nineties, like uh the mask, the mm-hmm. Jim Carrey one. Mm-hmm. And I remember there were moments. I don't remember specific moments, but I know he did it a lot. Like mm-hmm. when he talked to the camera, turned and talked to the camera. Mm-hmm. Um Oh, there yeah. was this this movie. Did you ever watch this movie Stranger Than Fiction? Stranger Than Fiction? No. Oh, okay. This is really so it, it's like a different kind of breaking fourth wall where okay. it wasn't like breaking the fourth wall to us, but mm-hmm. um, this movie stars Will Ferrell and Will Ferrell's just this regular guy, but he starts hearing mm-hmm. a voice in his head that narrates his entire life. Oh. And later on, he finds out that who that voice is and it's like a, an author and it's an author writing a book and he confronts the author and then basically everything she's writing in the book is actually his life playing out. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So, it's not really a fourth wall to us, but it's a fourth yeah. wall, you know, to them. Okay. I think, I don't know if this qualifies. I think it might be, but it's more like um, those Bugs Bunny cartoons, right? Mm-hmm. Where uh, it was Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck. They mm-hmm. would go around, they would uh, talk to the artists and the artists would draw them in. And then draw them in a certain situation and they would take take advantage or take the pencil away from them and start drawing themselves. That sort of thing. Oh, yeah. I remember that. And then, like, they're like, oh, I need, like, uh, the stop this guy. And then they took... Yeah, the, exactly. Yeah, they take a pencil. They draw an anvil that falls yeah. on them. Yeah. I remember yeah. that. That's a good point. Or or even, like, uh, those old Disney Goofy uh, TV show where, like, Goofy does... It's, like, instructional video. Like, and then you take this and you put it together or uh, take this A, put it to B, and then B to A, and the the narrator would start instructing Goofy what to do and the Goofy would look confused or like try to, do you remember those sort of thing? Yeah, like the tutorials, right? Like, yeah, yeah, it's like tutorial. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like washing your clothes or something like that. Yeah, yeah, putting a TV together for Sunday football or something like that. Yeah, I, I now I remember. I oh, mean, I totally forgot about that. But that, yeah, that's that's really funny. Yeah. So um, those are like the the old school ones I remember. But yeah, go ahead. and then you mentioned about like cartoons that remind me of the the Spider Man cartoon. Which one? The old one, the one in the nineties. Oh, um, like the uh, the amazing or the, the the one that was good. Yeah, yeah, the okay. good one. Yeah. 
Yes. Um, do you remember near the end of the series, they had this uh, episode where all the different dimension versions of Spider-Man's teamed up? No. <laughs> um, do you remember Madam Web in that series? <laughs> okay, yeah, yes. I remember Madam Web, yeah. So near the end, Madam Web and the Beyonder, they, they kind of collected all the different Spider-Man from uh-huh. different universes. And then they would all like team up to kill this version of Spider-Man Carnage. Mm. Um, oh. And um, there was one of the Spider-Man who basically had no powers. And then, oh. um, and then, uh, and he was just there for the ride, but he couldn't do anything. Yeah. And then Madam Web was telling Peter, like the one that we know, like he should visit that Spider-Man's world. So then at the end of the series, they go to his world and then... That version of Spider-Man tells our version of Spider-Man that, so in my world, I'm actually an actor and I play you on TV. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, oh, really? And then, yeah, and I want you to meet someone. And then he basically takes him to meet Stan Lee. <laughs> oh, that's has be cool. <laughs> yeah. And then Stan Lee actually cameoed as a voice and he, he was talking about like, like this is creation coming to life and, you know, all that stuff. So, you, maybe if you Google that or YouTube it, I think it's like just uh-huh. like animated Peter Parker meets Stan Lee or something like that. So, I don't know if it's still there. But I remember that very clearly because I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. And that was like, I think one of the first times where I I tried to like figure out what the breaking fourth wall is. Like, yeah, you know, like I never saw that before in my life. So... Or never actually thought about it because the way that Goofy does it and Bugs does it is so like organic. And then this one just took like a serious show with a serious world and suddenly turns it on its head. Oh, uh, I found it. This, apparently also uh, Stanley guest stars in Ultimate Spider-Man as well. In what? Ultimate Spider-Man. Oh, did he? Uh, I, I just found out right now too. Oh, yeah. okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's yeah. That's pretty cool. That, that first one. Yeah, the one that says Spider-Man meets Stan Lee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, I remember that. Let's see. What else? Oh, do you know any video games that broke the fourth wall? Uh, I can tell you one right now that I remember right away. Um, right. Did you ever play Metal Gear Solid? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. There's this uh, character. It's a boss battle. Yeah. And his name is Psycho Mantis. And he's mm-hmm. like a psychic. And he can know your every move. So... One of the cool things is in order to beat him, you cannot play your controller in the first player slot because he could read your mind. You oh. actually have to unplug it and plug it into the second player slot to play it so he can't read your mind. Oh, that's really unique actually. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other thing that's really cool is that if you had a memory card that had other Konami games on it, uh-huh. Then Psycho Mantis would be like reading your mind. He's like, I see you like to play. And then so and so. Oh man, that's kind of creepy. <laughs> yeah. It's, it was pretty funny. I remember that. Like when that first happens, like, man, this game is like really out there. Yeah. Yeah. Man, yeah, that's, that's very different for his time at least. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the other game you told me about is the Stanley Parable. You remember that one? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. I haven't played it, but I, I think you talked about how that one breaks the fourth wall. It might have. I'm not sure. I never played it either. I just see. Oh, okay. Oh, well, it's a, it narrates your your character's life, I guess. Oh no no not not Stanley Parable. It was um, Bastion. Oh, is the that the one up, where you walk in the oh then the, the narrator will talk you through it or sort of thing? Oh, that's that's what um, Stanley Parable does. Oh, okay. I, I didn't play that one. And then if you do something against what the narrator says, then he he talks. He he mentions it or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let me see. I'm going to look for 25 classic moments when movies broke the fourth wall. Oh, that's a good list. <laughs> it's too late. We already listed a lot. <laughs> yeah, I know. That, that is, I'm just kidding. I just, I'm trying to think of video games because those are really yeah. cool. I'm trying to, I'm thinking of like game idols where like, uh, I think, uh, was it Ninja Turtles? Mm-hmm. Where like after a while it would just, Stan, I start tapping his foot and look at you. Oh, look at yeah. The, look at the, the gamer and be like, are, are you going to move or something? And Sonic the Hedgehog, too. Yeah. yeah. He stands there, he taps his foot, and he looks at you. Yeah. He's like, uh, are you going to do anything? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What other games did that? Hmm. 
Oh, well, some of the fighter games, they throw the character towards the screen. Remember that? Oh, uh, okay. A lot of it throws the character towards the screen. Um, oh, there's... The Simpsons. The Simpsons game. Did you, Did you ever know? play it? Like, not the old, old school one. The newer one, it's uh, it's like The Simpsons, the video game or something like that. It's called that. Okay. On and PC? It's, I, I, well, they had a PC release, but it was like a free roaming game. Okay. And then every time you did something, it would pop up message like if you had to jump up a bunch of platforms, and then pops up message and it says video game trope platforms, and then <laughs> it will tell you like what you have to do and stuff like that. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I remember playing that game for a little bit. Oh, this is a this is a funny article by Dorkly.com. It says eighteen mm-hmm. times video games broke the fourth wall a little too hard. <laughs> so what were the? Right, let's see your um, list. I mean, I'll list the games, and I don't recognize some of these, but Secret of Evermore. Have you seen that? I've heard about it, but I never played it. Oh, so it's like RPG over the top, and then there's a character that says, somebody is watching over us, controlling us. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, I tell you. It's true. I guess this is a crazy character no one believes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's we are merely... Game. Oh, there's more. We are merely sprites to dance at the beck and call of our button-pressing overlord. This is a video game, don't you see? We are characters in a video game. It's a, it's an old man. <laughs> let's say that. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, Paper Mario. It says, uh, the entire Paper Mario series doesn't even have a fourth wall. So there's a character that says, well, I've already locked you in jail. There isn't actually much worse I can do without raising this game's age rating. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. In uh, Pokemon. Oh, did you uh, play uh, Pokemon? Like the... Which one? I guess it's the one of the later color ones. On oh, Pokemon. no. No. Because in here it says you can visit the game developers of Pokemon and then oh. talk to them. And then they, you ask them and then the guy says, I'm a graphic artist. I drew you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I'm, I'm trying to think. There's like... A few situations. I, I feel like those are like Easter eggs, right? Yeah. There are yeah. Easter eggs of like, people, of like the dead developers or artists that put themselves into the game or even like TV show or like um, movies. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it's still kind of breaking the fourth wall though. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no. I understand that. Oh, my gosh. This one's funny. So Final Fantasy XIII 2, um, mm-hmm. if you get the DLC, the character says... I was starting to worry that you'd never download this part of the game and I'd be stuck in digital limbo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Shameless self-promoting. Oh my gosh. And Spec Ops, the, the there's a line in there that says the U.S. military does not... So it's like the narrator. The U.S. military does not condone the killing of unarmed combatants, but this isn't real, so why should you care? <laughs> <laughs> That's so bad. <laughs> Do you know any other games? I still have a list right here. A few more. No, I, I, I'm, nothing comes to mind for the games. Mm. <laughs> I'm, looking, I'm looking at Final Fantasy VII. Did you ever play Final Fantasy VII? No, I did not. I wanted to. There's a section there while, like, while Cloud is talking to someone. Mm-hmm. And then uh, he notices a menu select finger. And he says, huh? Finger? What the hell? <laughs> oh my gosh let's see I'm thinking it's not a game but I'm thinking mm-hmm. of like YouTube videos but yeah. you know how like it's like a, what was it those stick figures where yes. they fight against like the, the computer the guy fighting against the computer sort of thing yes yes the, the epic like stick figure martial arts stuff right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. and then like they those start sort of thing where, like, the, the viewer is like the mouse and yeah, a whole bunch of thing, and the, the stick figure is fighting against it. Yeah. Oh, and did you remember? Um, that reminds me of other real life incidences. Uh, saw a video of this professor. He was trying to teach his class, and then suddenly there's a version of him on screen, and while he's teaching, like on the projector, and then he starts conversing and talking to himself, and then fighting himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's like another fourth wall thing. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Let's see. Man, that reminded me of something else. Oh, and then Deadpool. I mean, obviously Deadpool, but in Marvel vs. Capcom 3, 
um, I, it's a fighting game, mm-hmm. but his super move is really cool. <laughs> so he, when he gets a super move, he starts like beating, beating them up mm-hmm. and then he ends their, the super move with like, he's like batter up and then he picks up the super meter bar from under him <laughs> that's filled up. <laughs> <laughs> and he uses that as a bat to like knock them away. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, let's see. And every time he does like a uppercut, he'll just say, shot you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's see. I don't know any other ones. Yeah, I don't know any other ones. No, me neither. Okay, should we move on? You, 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 you got mail. You, 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 you got mail. You, 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 you got mail. You, you, you. Okay, so moving on to the um, community question um, and topic. Sorry, we just talked about the topic. Community question. I got to pull up the community question. Last week was, if you were stuck on an island, what one thing would you bring? But assuming that you already have like everything else to survive. Oh, so you're, you don't need anything else that doesn't necessity. You just yeah. need. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me read some of the answers. Um, so almost better than silence says an acoustic guitar, hopefully some extra strings. Also a more unrealistic answer, a grand piano. Uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, Judge Greg says, can I assume electricity? And then someone responded, Nick responded, uh, you don't understand how an island works. <laughs> so, yeah. Let's see. <laughs> I mean, um, why is an island? So, Monster Closet, they responded with at Paco RUK, which is another uh, one of the co-hosts of Monster Closet. Mm-hmm. And they didn't really answer. And then that guy says, Francis, Francisco says, are you saying I would be the thing you would take onto the island? <laughs> Um, John Layola, he posts a picture of Wilson from uh, Castaway. But he's already there. He's he's by default there. He's a necessity. Oh, that's true. Wilson, <laughs> he's the he's the he's the ball though. He's the ball with the face. Yeah, he's he's on every island. You just need to find him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Judge Greg says American Independence. Uh, <laughs> And Sword Chop says a muffin. I, I don't know why. What kind of muffin, though? From the Muffin Man? <laughs> the Muffin Man? The Muffin Man. Hey, that reminds me of something. At work one day, it was so weird. I was with three other people. We were doing our, like, go live support. Uh-huh. And then um, someone said, oh, it's, it's like the Muffin Man. And then someone was like, have you heard of the Muffin Man? And another person said, the Muffin Man? And another person said... The muffin man. I was like, "What is going on?" Yes, <laughs> it was you just like found, you, you have found your 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 <laughs> ideal place to work on. Yeah, it was just like four different people, and it was like no pause in between, like just like straight through. It was like, "Oh, it's the muffin man." Have you heard of the muffin man? The muffin man. The muffin man. And it was just like <laughs> four different like voices saying that. It was no like breaks in between. <laughs> That's the yeah. best place to work at. And you know, all <laughs> your workers have the same mindset. Yeah. It was, it was so weird for me. I just like uh, double take and I was like, okay. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. So, do you have an answer for this question? Uh, I, I would take an airplane. That's a very good answer. <laughs> 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 yes. Yeah, so, you can leave the island at will. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, why did no one say that? Yeah, when the, when the answer doesn't need to be practical, it's a lot easier to make up random stuff. <laughs> yeah. All right, you have a question for this week? Uh, yes. Um, I think the question what I, I gave you before was like, uh, what would be your signature laughter? Or it could be like diabolic or anything. So, so instead of like... Signature laughter. Yeah, so like in movies, you will hear like, Wah, ha, 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 ha. Uh-huh. Or like if you were like what would yours be? Would it be something diabolic or would it be something giddy or it could be like Ta-ha-ha-ha. like SpongeBob let's make, you have. Let's make this like a a little more interesting. 
Okay. Um, what would be your only laugh? Okay. So you yeah. have to laugh like this at every situation if you laugh. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Man, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how to make this ridiculous. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know what? I just probably want to be like, ha. Huh? <laughs> That's it. Just, it's just like now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, just one. I don't even two. half a now. <laughs> Yeah, just like ha, like just a sarcastic ha. <laughs> You're not even gonna make a question mark, huh? <laughs> Wait, okay. hmm. I, I yeah. think I would do uh, a, a, a semi cackle. Where it'd be like, Wah! that's it. I think you like, should add like a pause and then add like one more cackle at the end. <laughs> 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 I think that would be good. Okay. Yes. Okay, cool. All right, let's move on to the game time. Um, we could do one game. Let sure. one of us guess. Uh, do you want to guess or you want me to guess? I will guess. You will guess. Okay. Uh, video game, movie, TV show, which one do you want? Uh, the, 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 uh, video games. <laughs> video games. Okay, video games. Oh gosh, that's very tough. Uh, I know. I don't know what video game you play. Let me think. Uh, we could do movies. We could do movies. It's fine. <laughs> I, I don't even know what movies you watch. <laughs> okay, fine. Let's do video games. It's a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. It's like... Um. Hmm. Uh. Um. Or, or I can let you choose, Tony, and, and which one, whichever one is easier: TV show, thing, that. I mean, I, I have an idea for a game, but I don't think... I don't know if you played it. Okay. So, I'll go with that. Okay. I hope you know this game. I hope or at least do. heard of it. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, you ready? Yeah. Is this a multiplayer game? Uh, it can be. What does that mean? So, so yes? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> Um, is this a game, does this game have online, sub, online multiplayer or, or online thing, online gameplay? I feel like it does, but I can't tell. Okay, I'll ask another question. Is this game, uh, in, after 2010? Yes. Yes. Is this on PlayStation 4? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, originally, I guess the... Original release is PlayStation 4. Uh, <laughs> yes? Okay. I know it's on PlayStation 4. Okay. Um, is this an action game? No. Okay, multiplayer action. Is this a fighting game? Nope. PlayStation 4. Uh, the, is this release on other cons or on other platforms as well? Yes. Okay. Um, is this a, a game developed by a Japanese company? Oh, wait. Yeah. Uh, um, no. Okay. Um, would you play? Is the main character a male? Uh, unclear. Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess not really unclear. I would say can be. Okay. You can select the characters then. Um, is he multiplayer? Uh, so it's not a fighting game or an action game, you said? Mm hmm. Okay. What was, uh, is this a RPG game? Um, yes, it's, it, part of the genre is like role playing. Okay. Um, 2000, after 2010, huh? Uh, is this, does this take place in, does it have a sci sci-fi setting? I don't think so. Okay. Is this a modern setting? Uh, I'm gonna say yes. Okay. I mean, okay. It's damn it. This is tough. Uh, it kind okay. <laughs> the stuff that happens in the game can happen in a modern time. Oh, it's okay. Yes, this whole game can be in our modern times. Okay. 
Um, You're at 10 questions, by the way. Yeah. Modern times. Uh, is are the, are the characters you can pick humanoid? Yes. Uh, okay. Um, modern times. That's RPG. I didn't say it's solely RPG. Oh, I mean, it has RPG elements. Yeah. Uh, RPG elements. Uh, is this game in 3D? Define 3D. Um, I'm, so I'm thinking more like what we're used to, like with Diablo 3 and stuff like that, not pixel art. Uh, not enough. Yeah. Not then pixel no. art stuff. Okay. So it's not in 3D? No. Okay. So it's a 2D game. <coughs> or it has 2D sprites sort of thing. This, uh, Do you shoot hmm? projectiles out of a weapon? <laughs> I highly doubt that, but I never played this, so I don't know. Oh, okay. Should I well, I it? highly doubt it, though. Oh. So I won't count that as a question. Okay. Uh, does this game involve violence? As in, like, punching, shooting, kicking, that no. sort of thing? No. Okay. I mean, I kind of hope not. <laughs> You'll understand why I said that after you know what the game is. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to figure this out. Uh, uh, is this an indie game? Yes. Okay. Now your indie ring just lit up. I, I know, but I'm like, which one? <laughs> <laughs> A lot of the ones I know are like action-ish. Uh, okay. Oh, man. Okay, humanoids. God, if you pick like a visual novel, I would hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not lame. <laughs> I, I know, but one of these days you want to throw me off and have a visual novel. No, I think if, if Lamb chooses a game, he's probably going to do that. Um, let's see. I try to choose games that you're aware of. I hope I'm aware of it. RPG, multi RPG ish. Uh, is this a side scrolling RPG? Um so when you say side scrolling I'm thinking double dragon. Yes. Then no. Oh. Is this a platformer? Nope. You're at sixteen questions. Oh god. I have nowhere close to <coughs> is this a okay, modern that could have been uh multiplayer with possible online. Uh oh god. Pixel art you said? Mm -hmm. uh, that is non-violent, so it's not anything shooting or fighting or fighting. And I'm, I'm thinking, God, what can it be? Uh, okay, it's so RPG element. RPG element <coughs> that makes you question violence. <laughs> if you get to 19 questions and uh, still are nowhere, I'll give you a clue. Okay. Okay, let's see. Uh, humanoid characters. Did you say both male and female? Um, yeah. Unclear? Oh. Uh, let's go, yeah. Okay. Choose male and female. Uh, it's a game that I might heard of. Let's see. Does this game have a... Wait, that would make sense. Because I was going to ask if... Because if a game has a long-running series, it wouldn't be indie anymore. Would it? Um, you are correct, so you don't need to ask that. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, does in two thousand after two thousand ten too? So recent game. Uh, uh. <laughs> right. Should I give you a clue now? I'll give you a more vague clue now. Um, uh, let me guess one more. Okay. Is it a sports game? No. Okay, okay, go ahead. I'll read the clue. Okay, so first clue is the more general clue. This game was released after 2015. Right. I figured that much. Oh, okay. Your next clue will come after the next question. God damn it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, uh, Which, by the way, you're at 17. Yep. Yeah. So, okay, okay. I really hope you know this game. Me too. 
But I'm just trying to think what game it might be. It's not by a Japanese developer. Uh, so what can it be? So a game without, an RPG game without violence, or RPG-ish. So how would you level up? Through talking? <laughs> I would do, would, oh my god. What can it be? Uh, RPG-ish elements. Does, are, are, oh man, hold on. Okay, hold on. Oh man, I know like too many action-ish games that involve violence. <laughs> no, <laughs> that was so hard. Wait, right, is this uh supernatural themed? Nope. I did. Okay, let me think of a next clue for you. Um, <clears throat> this game was released simultaneously on Windows, Linux, uh, Mac, PlayStation Four, and Xbox One. And then, sorry, no, Xbox One was later. And then after that, a little bit later, it was released on the Switch. And there will be another release on the PlayStation Vita in, uh, in this month, if not already. Switch. So the original game was 2016. And then it went to the Switch on 20, in 2017. And mm-hmm. it's coming to the Vita in 2018. Hmm. Game. So it's not any Nintendo game because it's not by a Japanese developer. Yeah, also because it didn't go on a Nintendo platform until later. Yeah. Uh, how, what would it be? Is it a... Or... Uh, I have like one question. <laughs> yeah, you do. Make it count. <laughs> Let's see. How can I answer this? Okay, if... if Things are growing up something similar to Pokemon where you raise them, like Tamagotchi. Violence would be bad. Because <laughs> that's animal abuse. <laughs> but is there a game that's like that? Uh, with pixel art, too. Oh, man. It's something that could happen in modern time. Um... Eh. I'm pretty sure this game is in modern times. It is in modern time? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. It's just very unclear from description, but like, I'm pretty sure it can't really be outside of modern times. It can be in old times, but it's... I'm pretty sure it's modern. Hmm. Oh, man. See, the, I only know like so many, so little games that are not, that does not involve violence. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, yeah, it's, me, well, it's just like everything is violent. It's making me wonder if you know this game. Because this game was... Uh, it is a popular game. It sold over does, three and a half million. Okay. <coughs> oh. Uh, oh, man. The only one I know that's cartoony is like... Oh, wait, hold on. Minecraft includes violence. So it's not Minecraft. Plus, it was released before 15, I think. And it's also 3D. Yes. Uh, Overcooked does not involve violence. But the, it, I don't know if it has like, RPG elements. Uh, it is multiplayer. <coughs> For the Switch, I'm not sure. Linux. That's to like be it. fair, multiplayer was added last month. Oh, does it? Involve oh no that has viol- that game has violence though hmm man that that violence thing just makes me throws me off on, on everything <laughs> you you don't know any non-violent games I, well I I do but oh, I thought I did <laughs> but then the the core game isn't well the core game has some violent aspect but it's not like fighting fighting because I know like there's like farm stuff farming stuff. Like Stardew something, Stardew Valley, and then but then that you go into a dungeon and you fight monsters eventually for stuff. Uh, then there's uh, what is it? Harvest Moon. Does this involve? Is this a ca- wait? Yeah, is this a casual game that involves farming ish? 
Yes. And also remember I said that um, I hope there's not, but I'm not sure about violence, remember? Yeah. Yeah. So, and your answer to that question is yes. Oh, God. Now I'm confusing it. <laughs> oh, now I had to choose between you. Uh, what are you choosing way, between? It's between Harvest Moon or like Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley is the recent one. I heard it added multiplayer recently. And you said it's not part, it's not, it's an indie game. So I guess my, this is my last question, right? My last yeah, guess. Yeah, last question. So I'll, I'll guess, I'll guess Stardew Valley. Yes, it's Stardew Valley. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Oh my, oh my God. gosh, you got to like 20 questions and got Stardew Valley. Yeah, so I didn't know if there was fighting and stuff uh, and like killing and yeah. stuff like that. And I was like, I am I hope there isn't, but there could be, but I'm not sure. So, yeah. But yeah, everything else kind of fits because it's it's also like one of those games where you think it's Japanese developed, yeah. but it's not. It's actually American. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, it's made by one guy, and it's uh, Eric Barreau. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and my clue for your 19th question was, um, I was going to say that this game drew heavy influence from a Natsumi-published game on this SNES in the 90s. Oh. Which was Harvest Moon. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so, I, and then I was like, okay, wait a minute. You said it's an indie game, so it can't be Harvest Moon. Yeah, exactly. Man, oh. good job. You got at the 20th question. Oh, God. I'm so <laughs> glad I decided to watch like one random episode of Harvest Moon, uh, of a Stardew Valley from Streamer. I was like, oh, oh that's, okay. that's the only reason I knew about it. That I knew like it had, it involved like dungeon crawling in a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I didn't know about like you actually have to kill stuff. Yeah, yeah, you can. I mean, you can. You don't have to, but you can. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so uh so there you go. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Uh all right, let's move on to the final lap. Sure. Um you got anything to plug? Uh yeah. I mentioned in other uh podcasts before, but my friend Vince is uh starting up his new uh starting up as a streamer, so go support him at Hype Man Vince on for uh YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, uh, and Snapchat. And he does, he's a, a vlogger for doing food challenges and stuff like that. So he does random stuff too. Um, most time he, uh, try to do like challenge people to dancing or I think one of the other one I saw where he tried to eat a giant bowl of fall as, was it fallicious? Uh huh. And then, yeah, he, he failed and kind of threw up. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Did he it was, live stream him throwing up? Yeah, part, yeah. <laughs> that, that that's not good. <laughs> yeah, it, it wasn't like super like uh, grotesque or anything, but uh-huh. it was like oh oh. It's more yeah. like turn off the stream. <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't know he had Snapchat, so I just added him right now. Okay. Hype man Vince, right? I think so. I'm, let me ch- double check. I want to make. I don't want to give him wrong information. Uh, hold on. Give me one moment, please. Yeah, Snapchat app is getting confusing to use. Really? Why? How come? They they changed the way that the stories show up. Okay. So Maybe. it's um, I don't I I don't know what I'm doing right now. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I don't know how like how to navigate for like new stories and stuff. Oh, was there like pretty set way of doing things before? Yeah, and then they change it, and people complain. Now they change it back, but they didn't change it back to the original. Uh, it's like modified. Oh, let's see. Hold on, sorry, sorry, guys. Give me one moment. Trying to find out all this stuff before I give you false information. Yeah, uh, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Snapchat, and Facebook. Cool, awesome. And uh, you guys can also find us on um, all the social media avenues. Um, NTFTTBot and um, you know, Twitch, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, everything, YouTube. Uh, am I missing anything? Twitch? Yeah, Twitch. I already said that. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No. Oh, actually, and then there's this new game that I've been playing. <coughs> I will play the demo. It's really cool. It's uh, called Chroma Gun. Chroma Gun? Uh, 
Yeah, so it's like it's like a puzzler game, kind of like Portal, but it's not Portals. You're you're basically you have a gun that shoots colors, different colors, and then right. you have to and the colors attract to each other. So you may need like this ball on this switch over here mm-hmm. next to this other wall to trigger like a door opening, mm-hmm. and you know the wall may be I don't know green and the ball may be blue. You would have to change your gun to yellow and shoot the ball to change it to green so it matches up with the green on the wall. Uh. Yeah. So it's it's just a demo, but it's pretty fun. I'm, I think I might buy it. I'm not sure, sure yet. Um, but yeah, it's on Switch, and I might maybe just stream that or you know put some U- some YouTube videos up for the the demo. So is it a free demo or is it? Yeah, it's it's a free demo on the Switch. So yeah, but yeah, other than that, you have anything else? Uh, I I think I just started playing. Was it Wizard of Legends that I, I mentioned to you? It's so weird because you say Wizard of Legends. In my mind, I expect to hear Legend of Wizards. Yeah, I know. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. It was very... It took me a while to remember that. Yeah. But uh, uh, it's a pretty cool uh, pixel art roguelike game where it's somewhat fast-paced. And you go around as a a wizard uh, in dungeons and you just fight (coughs) and stuff. And it's it's, uh, co-op as well. So you can... If you have friends over you can play at least two players um and it just it's just very different if you're it, i guess it's kind of like similar to old school games where you can actually have friends to play with you so now you both where, suffer where you actually friends. have friends <laughs> yeah try to make friends <laughs> but um, i don't know if there was like a an online version of it or online co-op or not but uh, mm-hmm. there is co-op. uh i'm looking on the nintendo switch store yeah, and I think it came out. Uh, yeah, it came out here too. It was like sixteen yeah. bucks. Yeah, it came out like four days ago or something like that. Oh, so, it looks like a, a Legend of Zelda version of Diablo. Yes, essentially, it, it's pretty fast paced. Each time you go, you get a new spell, or you you farm money or crystal, and you try to get different spells. Mm-hmm. So you get you learn a new spell and in the spell slot, and then you just try to find out the match that fits your play style. Hmm, that looks cool. Yeah. Yeah, I might try it out. Let me see. Is there a demo? There's no demo. Damn it. Oh. Um, yeah, I might look at the gameplay first and see how it is. Yeah, see how it is. Uh, it, it's not meant for you to play uh, long term anyways because it, it, you're, you're meant to die a lot. So you just play and you pick it up, you play, and then it's like, all right, that's enough for it, and you drop it. Oh, okay. Oh. Cool. Yeah, so there's no like a uh, storyline progression or any of that. You just play and you stop whenever you feel like it. That's cool. Uh, and um, speaking of other new games, I'm on the Switch store right now, and uh, Hyrule Warriors is uh, is out on the Switch. Oh, uh, Hyrule Warriors. <laughs> Did you it just reminds it? me of, like, Dynasty Warriors, but with Zelda skins. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I played it on um, um, the Alice Friends, uh, what's it called, uh, Nintendo DS, uh-huh. and uh, it was really cool. So, it's cool now that they have a for Switch that you can play on the full screen TV. Too. Yeah. I really like that they um, incorporate. There's a lot of games for Switch now mm-hmm. because before it was just dead. <laughs> it was like, yeah, no- and what's also really cool is a lot of the games are indie games. Yes, so like there's this yeah. one I'm looking at right now called Framed Collection, which I don't know what it is, oh. but it looks like you know comic book frames where you like move your um, what's it called. Uh, you would put the frames of a comic book together so that it makes sense. Mm-hmm. It's like you change the order, you change the outcome. That's its tagline. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. 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 I do like that it's not uh, all Nintendo games or Nintendo exclusive sort of thing. So yeah. Like you said, it's indie stuff. So that's really cool. Yeah. So that's really cool. Um, yeah. So uh, do you have anything else? No, I think that's it for me. Okay, cool. So, uh, no time for time travel. Signing off. Pretty good warp speed. See ya. Bye. I love, 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 I love